The Trump administration is proposing a new rule that would make it harder for low-income immigrants to get green cards. The policy focuses on something called the public charge standard. More on that in a bit. It's existed in immigration law since the 1880s. In a new piece for CBSNews.com, Camilo Montoya Galvez looks into the proposal and gets reaction from lawmakers. Camilo is uh, in D.C. and he joins us now. I think the first thing we have to do to walk through walk through this with people is explain what a public charge is and how the Trump administration is proposing to change the definition to impact people. Thanks for having me. It's not a widely discussed issue, as you mentioned. So the proposed rule would expand the definition of what is a public charge. The term is used by immigration authorities to describe a person whom they believe will rely on government benefits to live in the U.S. So it was first codified, as you mentioned, in 1882. This was an era in American history when the government sought to restrict immigration from developing countries. That same year, Congress passed a bill that, that barred all immigration from China, the Chinese Exclusion Act, a, a very notorious uh, legislation. And immigration authorities currently ask uh, green card applicants that they will not be a burden on American society. But what this new regulation would do is also consider government food, medical, and housing benefits used by immigrants who are applying to get permanent residency and temporary visas. So this includes popular programs like the Section 8 housing vouchers, uh, food benefits like SNAP and WIC, and uh, Medicare's uh, Part D prescription coverage, which are widely used uh, across America. So we're talking about legal immigration. If you come to this country and you want to apply to become a permanent resident of this country to get a green card, you, uh, you, part of your application is uh, involving the question of whether you will be a burden here, not a taxpayer, but a user of taxpayer dollars. And this proposal would expand the definition of public charge, meaning a person who's going to be essentially a burden on the system. And if you are a burden under this policy, you would be denied that green card and essentially ejected out of the country? Yeah, the bottom line is that the test will become a lot more rigorous. Other factors include if you have a pre-existing condition that requires quote-unquote extensive medical treatment, that will be judged heavily as well. If you lack uh, English language proficiency, so that is to read, write, and speak English, that will be judged as well. And that will take into consideration once you are subject to this public charge test. So correct me if I'm wrong, I imagine the Trump administration argument in favor of this is, look, you know, a country is many things, but one thing a country is is a community of taxpayers, and we can't have people who are dragging down the system. We have to pay in, not take all this money out. Um, what are Democrats uh, who oppose the Trump administration's uh, proposed expansion of this policy, what are they saying about it? Yeah, that's correct, Tony. So while, because I reached out to the Department of Homeland Security, they told me the rule promotes, quote unquote, immigrant self-sufficiency. But Democrats have been scathing under criticism of the proposed ruling, saying it will have very harmful effects on immigrant communities, particularly children. So they believe that immigrant communities will forego benefits, like I mentioned, uh, WIC, SNAP, food stamps, housing benefits, to make sure that they will be able to live in the U.S. with their family. Um, and of course, uh, I spoke to uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth, a Democrat from Illinois, who shared a very personal story of why she opposes the ruling when she came over from Thailand with her family in, in, eight, in 1984 to Hawaii. Her family was very, very poor. They faced ample financial hardship, and they relied on government benefits and food stamps to make ends meet. And she told me that she would not be in the chambers of uh, the Senate if it, not was, if it wasn't for food stamps uh, that she received when she was a teenager. So correct me if I'm wrong again, but under this scenario, families would, would not report the uh, assistance that they're getting because to do so could jeopardize their ability to stay in the country. So you are faced with a choice of staying in the country where you want to be or accessing benefits for yourself and your family? Yeah, and, and the paradox is, Tony, uh, and this is what uh, medical advocates are telling me and doctors, is that immigrants who are foregoing these benefits because of this fear will not even be affected technically by the uh, rule because they're already here as permanent residents uh, who will be seeking citizenship. But even those who have, are green card holders who will, again, not be subject to this test fear that 
they might lose out on their residency and that it will be harder for them to gain citizenship if they participate in these government benefits. So there was a public comment period on this. It ended in December. I think there were about a quarter million comments from the public, uh, pro right. and con. Where does this go from here? Right. So more than, as you mentioned, more than 200,000 comments were filed under a 60-day uh, public comment window. I reached out to the Department of Homeland Security. They said they're welcoming of the comments. They said they will review them and they, that they will try to incorporate, incorporate them in a final rule next year. But that doesn't mean that the administration will modify the rule or even scrap it. Uh, and Democrats have acknowledged that this will be very unlikely that the Trump administration abandons this policy. So the, the smart money is on this policy going forward, being enacted, the public charge definition being expanded, and these families facing a choice between staying here or getting the benefits they need. That's correct, and Democrats are expecting it uh, to be implemented. And I spoke to several House Democrats who will, of course, take control of the chamber in January and have investigative powers over the administration, that they will challenge this rule, uh, that they will try to pass legislation to reverse it if it is implemented, and that they will, you know, start some probes in uh, committees that they will control. But of course, uh, the Senate will still be controlled by Republicans, and there will be a Republican at the White House, so it will be very difficult for them to reverse the rule uh, through the legislative process. All right, well, for those who didn't know about it, we appreciate you shedding some light on this issue. Camilo Montoya Galvez, thank you very much. Thank you, Tony.